old school lacrosse. Uh, I told the men right after the game, it felt like when you were probably 10, 12 years old, playing on a, a muddy, grassy field, and you just played for the pure joy of it. You know, we're really spoiled here at the University of Virginia with incredible facilities, and we get to play at a lot of other great venues as well. We don't get to play in a slot very often, and uh, I, I really appreciate how much our men enjoyed it and embraced it and had fun, really had fun with this today, um, you know, with the conditions, and, and uh, uh, we didn't let it slow us down at all. Our transition game uh, was very effective today. You know, how often did number 24 finish a lot of other people's work there on that back pipe? But that was great to see we could get the ball up and down despite uh, the slippery conditions. Um, Peter Lazala, again, fantastic uh, at the X, giving us a lot of possessions. I mean, I'm seeing, we cleared the ball 32 times. I'm like, how did we, how'd we clear the ball 32 times? But I guess we kept winning the face off and throwing it backwards. You know, so Peter was great there. And then Cade and Cole did really well done with the, with the clearing game and getting that thing, uh, getting that ball to our offense and, and letting them go to work. Um, so I'll stop there. Uh, Connors looking healthy, looking like a different level of player. What does that bring to you guys when, when he's playing that way? Yeah, it's uh, Connors a warrior. He's been battling through stuff all year. Um, he's starting to get into a rhythm, as you can tell out there. The conditions today were made it challenging, so you couldn't really rely on planting your foot and change direction on a hard angle. And Connor did well taking advantage of that coming up the hash and making a couple really nice shots there. Um, and uh, but yeah, with, with Connor healthy, he now really presents that double threat of is he dodging the feed or is he dodging the score? And you can see him, you know, that's that's the uh, that's when he's the most effective when he's doing both. Connor, can you kind of go into that a little bit? Just at what point did you feel like you started? just in the last couple of weeks sort of feel a little more like yourself and you feel like you're kind of all the way back to what you want to be normally in that. Yeah, I mean, I guess first off, I have to give a lot of credit to our, our support staff, Rebecca Vazzo. We spent a lot of time together, probably too much time. Um, yeah, I think, uh, you know, really after, I guess after the second Duke game, I felt like I was really starting to turn a corner and, you know, starting to be able to practice a lot more and, and get that uh, chemistry back with our offense. And, you know, like Coach said, be able to pose that threat of, you know, not just dodging the feed, but, you know, also being able to hopefully turn the corner and you know, hopefully the, the shooting will come down the stretch as well. Okay, you, uh, you've played a lot of games at Plotner over your career. This is the last one. What, what were your emotions? Did that dawn on you at any point today? And did you and your classmates talk about going out the right way here? Yeah, um, definitely thought about it a lot before the game. Um, and then we started and I just kind of forgot about it. And then, um, you know, coach pulled me out the couple minutes left, and I was sitting there. I still, like, didn't realize that that might have been, like, my last time out there. And then Reeves came up to me, told me, and I was like, oh, crap. <laughs> oh, crap. And, then, and then luckily, uh, I went back in for, like, another 30 seconds or so. Um, so I actually got to, like, fully embrace it. Um, yeah, and then the fifth years, got a picture after the game, which is cool. Well, how did you guys handle the, the delay there? I mean, it obviously wasn't long enough to – be ridiculous like that Loyola game a few years back. But sure. How much of a challenge was it to kind of manage that in the, in the first few minutes after when the conditions were the worst? Sure. First of all, the, the emotions, as you can see, uh, Cade's not doesn't give us a lot of emotions most of the time. I, 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 I joke that he only smiles on Memorial Day Mondays. Um, he, um, it, 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 to have six men return for a fifth year to delay, you know, their professional careers and other, you know, other avenues. You know, it's a big deal for this group. You know, with uh, I'll probably m miss somebody, but I'm gonna try here. You know, with Jeff Connor and Xander Dixon and Cade and Petey, um, Grayson Saladay and and Peyton and um, I feel like I'm some, I feel like I'm missing one more, but just Evans and I have all these guys come back because it, it, it's so important to them. Virginia lacrosse is that important to them to do this, and so when it's their last game on Clockner, it's it's a big deal, and so. Uh, um, so I'm glad they, they embraced it and we talked about it and talked about it again. I was like, so being from being a little kid, we start playing the game in the mud and the slop, and here we are, the last game ever. But um, aside from that, it, uh, you know, it's like, okay, maybe we should slide more. You know, uh, we were thinking, okay, this field's going to be clear now, and all of a sudden it's a monsoon and you can't pass the ball, <laughs> and, you know, and, and the ball, the ground ball just stops if it's rolling away from you. Um, you know, and it's just adapting. Um, but um, yeah, so fortunate. We were very fortunate that it was just one delay. I mean, 30 minutes, anybody could do that, right? And uh, so we, uh, I'm sure 
Dan Shamati and myself were just hoping that this was going to be it. I mean, I, I did think about not calling timeouts. I, I don't know if I actually did call a timeout today, which, you know, because I was like, I don't want to be extending this thing and then another, you know, banger comes in. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and uh, fortunately, guys made me look good. Lord, was there were, I think, back to back goals where there were hockey assists, kind of like bing, bing, bang, and the second guy passed up a good shot to give Cormier a yeah. better shot to be watching that from the sideline. But, what hits you yeah, because you don't see that much in college across. He says more like a high school fast break goal where you the tic tac toe, point man, low right, low left goal. And to see that in, at this level, it's uh, it's really cool. It, it defines the unselfishness of this group and certainly the skill set of Connor, Xander, and Peyton. Um, but yeah, aren't those fun? You know, when you're just gonna be on that back pipe dunking it. You know, especially when the goalie's making some saves early and you don't want to get him hot there. So it's really, really defines who we are. For both the players, what were the field conditions like? And when the rain kind of stopped, the field still looked <laughs> incredibly wet. What, what was it like? Did it change uh, in the second half at all? Well, I mean, I think this year was the craziest weather year we've had, or I, at least I've had at UVA. Um, and I think we, you know, throughout the year we've kind of prepared for something like this. You know, we have our cleats that we wear, and you know, we always are checking our footing for the games. But it it was weird because. We haven't played in like a swamp before. We played on like <laughs> wet grass, but you know you're stepping in and you're just sinking. Um, but you know we, we tried to figure it out before we resumed, and then it started pouring and couldn't really hear anything. And so I, it was tough uh, transitioning into that. But once we got settled in, um, it felt fine. Yeah, and I guess I'll take a little bit of blame for the weather. I know I <laughs> predicted 80 and sunny on Wednesday, so. <laughs> um, yeah, it was. I guess it was just unlike anything that I've ever played in. Probably a lot of guys, you know, having to be really conscious about every step you take and planning and shooting, and um, yeah, just having to be really conscious about everything you're doing and uh, you know, trying not to let that affect the re the rest of your game. Whether it's just looking the ball in, I made a couple mistakes like that, and um, everything else. So it was just something that you can't prepare for, and you kind of just have to adapt to. Uh, uh, Xander set the single season school record today. What what would you kind of size up about the season that he's had and, and what he's been able to add? To yeah, I mean, it's, it's been an unbelievable year, and I think, uh, you know, everyone's become familiar with Xander's story and, you know, not having the biggest role, and now this year he's setting, you know, some of the all-time marks, which is pretty cool, but I think it's just a testament to the type of person Xander is and how hardworking he is. He's, he's had his head down this whole time here, and, you know, he hasn't given up, he hasn't complained, and he just kept putting in the work, and, um, you know, for Peyton and I to be a part of, uh, you know, Xander's historic season has been... Uh, Pretty cool, and you know he's. It's fun to watch him score a lot of goals. Connor, hey, okay. Oh, oh, um, you held the same output as the, when you met back in March, eight goals. Um, but they were missing a couple key pieces. Mm -hmm. How big is that for you guys, the defensive unit, to have the performance that you did, knowing that those those potent players were back with them? Yeah, um, you know, scouting this week. You know, we were told that people were you know healthier and have been playing better um, throughout the season, and so we were prepared for that. We knew that. Um, they would definitely be dodging harder, and you know, than they were the first game. And um, you know, our goal is to only let up a goal a quarter. And um, I mean, we we didn't quite get there. It was two goals a quarter, but uh, it's it's always nice holding a team like that below ten goals and just trying to get some momentum going into the next week. Kind of this team has a lot of experience, but you know, coach mentioned those fifth year guys, the guys that came back. Just kind of what is that group kind of meant for this team this year? Yeah, I, I mean. I'm just, I guess, me personally, I'm super thankful for, for everything they've done. And, um, you know, from our class, the first time that we got here, they welcomed us in and they did all the right things. And, um, you know, just the success that they've had here at UVA. And, you know, they really have changed the standard. And, you know, now, you know, May is a little bit different now these days. And, um, you know, we expect to win games in May. And, you know, a big, big part of that is because of what they've done. And, you know, I think you see a lot of it on Saturdays, but a lot of the credit goes to the stuff that they do every day. And, um, yeah, I'm just super thankful for them. Take one more. For Lars and, and Kate, if you guys don't mind, uh, Griffin coming in and playing for Quinton after the injury, how important has that been to uh, keeping this defense where you guys want it? Um, you know, those two were battling, you know, the whole season, you know, for that spot. And I think, you know, they're both amazing players. They, they really do their, you know, their job really well. And I think Coach, you know, did a good job throughout the whole season, you know, playing both. Getting you know game experience you know especially for Griffin who hasn't wasn't you know at UVA last year 
and um, you know it's just really amazing having the, you know all these players on our team that could step in and you know when someone goes down. All right, one last one from Zach, and then we'll wrap up. Call I was just going to say it's it's, just, it's it's critical to be an elite program having that depth. You watch an SEC football game and the running back goes down, Bama or Georgia, the next guy in is actually better, faster. You know, it's like, whoa, who, who's, where does this guy come from? We did that a couple of years ago when we surprised the world with number 39, all of a sudden showed up in April. You know, it, having Griffin Kologi develop the season as he did throughout the spring, and then Q does go hurt, insert Griffin Kologi, we don't really miss a beat. And so it, it defines what we're pursuing here to, to be at the elite level. Connor, both your goals came off the big little a couple other shots from there as well. What sort of challenge does that pose the defense? What relationship do you have with those guys that, that you work with back there? And what does that give you guys? Yeah, I think that's been a big focus since I, going back to what I said earlier, since I have started practicing more is getting back to that big little behind. And again, a lot of the credit goes to Coach Kerwin and what he's able to do with the inside guys, which attracts the, the off ball guys. And then, you know, what he's able to cook up for us on ball as well. And um, you know, I do have to give a lot of credit to the guys that are setting the picks, like Jeff Connor, Will Corey. These are really selfless guys that are, you know, willing to set really hard picks and sometimes take some contact for it. So, um, you know, I think just getting back to that and you know, finally getting some reps doing in practice during the week has been super helpful. Cool. Thanks. Thank you.